What is good guys, we are back with SPL week 6 coverage, we got Psychic Mewtwo vs Check It Up aka Tsunami, we're gonna rewatch the first turn that we missed, you see Lanus and Timonet go off before Coco's Electric Surge, so we know already that the Lanus is Choice Scarf, the U-turns out on the opposing Lanus, from that damage and from looking at Psychic Mewtwo's team, it's pretty obvious that this Lanus is defensive, helps him deal with the Zygarde, and it's also not Helmet, so it's most likely a Leftovers variant, Check has a few plays here, he could go Zapdos to scatter us out with HP Ice, he could go Torn to scatter us out with a potential Sky Strike, or he could go Scissor to just um, either U-turn, get the Mega up, or to knock off, depending on his Scissor set. Those are the three plays he has. Um, if either the Torn or the Zapdos come out, Psychic Mewtwo would probably go into either Coco or Megina. Megina is most likely going to be a V on Psychic Mewtwo's team. The Katana is probably going to be Scarf, Gunja is going to be Specs Ash, Coco could be Z-Move. Lanus is defensive and the Medichim is just a breaker. Medichim is actually really scary whenever it comes out on the Pex or Zygarde or Zapdos it puts in work. Also a well played Tapu Koko pretty much destroys Shake. It, no matter if it's Specs or Shuka, Koko both destroy him. Now he goes into Torn. He should just U-turn here because Psychic Mewtwo is not going to stay in. Psychic Mewtwo needs this Lanus healthy for the Zygarde. He knocks off. Coco comes out and we see it's a Z-Move Coco. And now unless the Zapdos is Spadef, I don't know how Shake is going to deal with this Coco. He might have to like try to catch him if he's like Specs HPIs and go into Scissor on the HPIs. Or he might just throw one of his Garon types in and hope that this doesn't have HPIs, but otherwise I don't know how he deals with this at all. Z-Move, it could be... It could be a Gigavolt Havoc or Twinkle Tackle Coco, we'll have to see. So he goes for Nature's Madness, interesting set. Zygarde gets leftovers. Zygarde is most likely gonna go for Protect here. This could be um, standard type of core that we see sometimes, Toxic Specs, Packs plus Protect Zygarde. Now if Psychic Mewtwo uh, has HPIs, he's probably gonna have to run a Kalk because sometimes these Zygarde's with Protect and Leftovers run Spadef Investment, so we had have, we would have to, he would have to Kalk that if that kills, right? And yeah, the rest of the team, the Mega Scissor is gonna be SD on Shake's side because the Defogger is either the Torn or the Zapdos. If the Zapdos is not static, I don't know how he deals with Medicham. So we see Protect and there's U-turn, so he probably doesn't have HP eyes or he calc and he doesn't want to risk it not killing. So he's gonna U-turn out here into Landris or Katana, most likely into Landris. And if Shake only has 1000 errors to hit the Landris, then he can go for that, but it's not gonna do anything. We see he does have Toxic, so that's actually cool, Protect Toxic Zaga with T arrows and last move either Dragonance, E-Speed or Sub. So the Texa Pex probably doesn't have Toxic Specs then if the Zygarde itself already has Toxic. So he gets up rocks as Shake goes hard into Tornado. So Shake can Defog here. So like is gonna hard out into Coco or Megina. And there's the Coco. We see a Defog. Um, I would just U-turn here if I'm Psychic Mewtwo because it's pretty obvious that Shake is just gonna go back to Zygarde or to Lando, to one of his two ground types. He doesn't want to risk anything else. And he knows this Coco most likely doesn't have HP Ice because he didn't go for it on the Zygarde. And from the U-turn damage, I think, I guess we can probably tell that this is physical Coco, so it could be Z Wild Charge, U-turn, it's just Madness, and last move could be Taunt or Roost. So did he U-turn on the Zygarde? He just Nature's Madness. So now you can U-turn back into Landris or Katana, probably into Landris. Shake is just gonna click 1000 arrows. It's gonna do some chip, it's not gonna do too much. These type of Zygarde's, they usually run like bulk investment and not max attack. There's the Landris on the Thousand Arrows, does 15%. Leftovers help him to get some health back so he doesn't take poison damage. And I would just U-turn here from Psychic Mewtwo because like, there's no point in getting rocks up. Exactly, I agree with that play. Because if he go for rocks, then the Tornadus is just going to defog anyway the next turn and it doesn't do anything, right? Because if you stay in, you're toxic and you just take more poison damage. Now, he can go back to Coco or he can go Megiana. If Greninja kills with Hydro Pump, there's another potential play. He goes Megiana. Now, I would probably just go either Toxapex. So I'm psyching Mewtwo here, I would Bolt Switch. The thing is, the thing is, um, Shake might want to try to go to one of his two ground types because if Zapdos or Pex come out here and Psychic Mewtwo Volt Switches, then the Medicham could come out, and if the Medicham comes out, especially on the packs, it pretty much gets a kill if it predicts correct between um, HJK and Ice Punch. And like I said, if the Zapdos is not static, I don't know if I said that already, I think I did. If the Zapdos is not static on Shake's side, I don't know how he deals with the Medicham, but at least he can try to para it with static if he has that. 
So this Megina is gonna be a V HP fire volt switch Flurken or ice beam in the last move probably iron head or flash cannon Shake if he has u-turn he can u-turn out if he doesn't have u-turn he has to hard switch But yeah, I think he doesn't want a volt switch to because if the ground types come out on volt switch It would be bad for psychic Mewtwo and shake might want to try to go to grounds like I said But he does yeah, that's just ice beam trying to catch one of the grounds Zapdos could roost or heat wave. He probably has to roost. And Psychic Mewtwo could just use this um, opportunity to get a slow Volt Switch into something. Obviously, it's not going to do anything because Zapdos roosted. Yeah, there's the Volt Switch. Like, Ice Beaming there doesn't do anything. Ice Beaming again on a roost because Zapdos loses the Flying type. So now he can go into Medicham or Coco. He goes Medicham. And this uh, Medicham can just go for Ice Punch. And we saw the Zapdos was pressure, right? Pretty sure we saw. Yeah, it's pressure. So that means he cannot even get the para. The only way he can para this manager is with a discharge. So Shake is probably just gonna click discharge because he doesn't have a switch in. Like if he goes Zapdos and Ice Punch next turn, Medi can just high jump kick. So that's it's not like he can really deal with the Medi So he just has to hope that he can do the discharge para. That's the Ice Punch. Almost Oko, so this is probably not max defense Zapdos or defensive Zapdos, I mean. So like bold zap it's not bold Zapdos, is what I'm trying to say. They don't run max defense, they usually run like 16 or 20 speed. But yeah, this is fast Zapdos, most likely with speed to outspeed Zygarde and Landris, because that ice punch did way too much. So Saiki Mewtwo can high jump kick here. Uh, Shake is most likely just gonna sack the Zapdos because he doesn't have a switch in and it's not that's not worth it to go in a scissor here on a potential high jump kick is what I'm trying to say. But if Psychic Mewtwo wants to catch a potential scissor pivot on an ice punch, he could high jump kick. Uh, it's just up to him if he wants to risk missing high jump kick. He could also just ice punch if he doesn't want to risk it. Because I think Shake is just gonna sack the Zapdos. Like Zapdos could still roost on Megina or on Greninja locked into spikes potentially. Or it could also roost on Landers, but it's put kind of be a 50 50 between Earthquake HP is not really not really if it roosts on Landers, Landers could just u turn to get Medicham back in So like it's not like the Zapdos is gonna do any work Even if it roosts the next time Medicham is just gonna come back in and then threaten it again So he just sacks it goes on Tornadoes and now I think he's forced to u turn here because obviously Psychic Mewtwo is gonna switch out because his Medicham destroys Shake whenever it comes on the Zygat or on the packs it gets a kill pretty much So yeah, I would just u turn here on the Coco slash Megina There's the Coco. Did he u turn? He went for Hurricane and he missed. Yeah, I don't think that was the play at all. I guess he, he kind of had to hope for the Medi to stay in there. I was hoping for a choke. Now, I would just U-turn here if I'm Psychic Mewtwo. Shake is probably going to go to one of his grounds. So I got all Landris. And if you U-turn... If you U-turn on Zygarde, you get your Medicham back in. If you U-turn on Landris, then you get either your own Landris in. Or you could also go... I don't, I don't think Greninja has to play because you don't want to take a it's Scarf U turn on Greninja. Like, if he goes Kartana, then Shake had a, has a free scissor, so I think I guess he's just gonna go to his own Landris. But yeah, he did make the correct play there in U turning. Because even if uh, Shake stayed in, he could have just gone to like Megiana or something. So as Landris comes out, uh, looking at this, I don't know. They could exchange HP Isis here, they could exchange Stealth Rocks. You'll have to see that. But yeah, this is actually Scarf Rocks on Shake's team because he doesn't have another Rocker. I just realized that, that's crazy. On Psychic Mewtwo's side, this is obviously also Rocks Land though. They both don't have another potential Rocker. Mm -hmm. The thing is, like, Shake can't really... Like, let's say, Shake can't really switch out here because if he goes Hard Tornadoes on, on a potential U-turn, then Coco comes back... Actually, no, no, the, what am I saying? Coco doesn't have HP Ith. Yeah, if Coco had HP Ith, it would completely destroy him like every time it comes in, but it doesn't have that, so like... <laughs> Shake is kind of lucky in that regard, but Medicham still destroys him, so it doesn't really matter. And also, like, it's not like the Coco did nothing, it's still weakened the Zygarde, right? So I assume we see a U-turn here from Psychic Mewtwo, because he knows he's slower than the opposing Landris, and he could afford to let his Landris take a HP Ith. He didn't need health on his Landris anymore, because the Zygarde is pretty much dead, and Zygarde was the main thing he needed for. Now he got the Medi in with the U-turn, and he can just... And just click Zen Headbutt here. So um, he just sacks the Zygarde. Oh, we substitute Medicham. Oh, this game is over as fuck, good god. So now you can just click Ice Punch. He doesn't have to predict anything. He predicts there, hoping hoping to catch him on a high jump kick, but he has no reason not to Ice Punch. Or, oh, I don't know, hoping for something. I don't know. 
Yeah, Ice Punch is pretty free here because if he pivots into packs, then you can just Zen Headbutt next turn. Sakimitu doesn't have to predict at all. So I made Champ, so he has sub Ice Punch and Headbutt, High Jump Kick. He has sub instead of Fake Out. That set can be really cool in some scenarios. Especially with Healing Wish support, it would be cool. This team doesn't have Healing Wish, but yeah, just saying in general. So yeah, just Zen Headbutt's here. It's not like Shay can do anything about this. This is gonna get a kill guaranteed unless he misses. Because like even if he goes in the scissor now and then a headbutt, then he still has to then he still loses the scissor to high jump kick because he would have to blow punch to break this up. So he pivots Landris, but Zen Headbutt is gonna do a lot. Yeah, it does a fuck ton. So now he has to U-turn to break this up. And I would just high jump kick here from Psychic Mewtwo just in case. Like he could ice punch if he doesn't want to risk it, but just in case he U-turns into scissor on an ice punch to kill the medi because now the medi is in bullet punch range high jump kick is like the play here in my opinion for sure he might just sack zygarde or pax probably nah he wouldn't sack pax if he sacks pax he loses to greninja he might sack zygarde but i think he could also go scissor so i would hjk, HJK there for sure yeah he does high jump kick i agree with that play now he has to go scissor to bullet punch and pick this up so he moved to probably he could go in the greninja or landers but i think he might also just sack this So let's just stay in, Bullet Punch picks off the Medicham. Now he could go into Megina to threaten this with an HP Fire. Or if he... Yeah, I think Megina and HP Fire threaten this is all. It's the, pretty much the play. Because the Greninja is most likely Ash on this team. Now he would also go Greninja, yeah. If he goes Greninja, then Shake would have to go Pax. Because he doesn't know the Greninja set yet. But like, it's pretty obvious to me that it's Ash, Gwen. Like, this is a, pretty much a team that's on samples. The only change that he made is... He put, um, there was like Scarf, Lari with Healing Wish on that team, but Mega Medicham, and I think the only change he made was adding Coco instead of Ma Scarf, Lari. Was it? Yeah, on that team it was Scarf, Lari, and not Sc and Z-Move, Cortana, but now he changed it, so it's probably Scarf, Cortana, and the Coco, Z-Move, yeah, yeah. So he does HP Fire as uh, Shake does just go into packs expecting that, now he gets a Volt Switch out into either Coco or Gren. Goes in the Greninja. Do we see a Scald or Toxic? See a Scald. Now Shake has to recover. So he could spam Dark Pulse here or he could go for Spike. But yeah, just spamming Dark Pulse is a fine play. It does a lot. So this Pex goes for Toxic instead of Recover for some reason. I think he had to recover there. But to be honest, this game is pretty over anyway. Because now he doesn't have a Dark Pulse switch in. So Sakimitu is just going to get Ash Ninja here. I doubt that this is our takes two Dark Pulses after Rocks and... Torn doesn't take it after rocks, I think. And if Torn takes it, it would get 2 hit KO. Landers is super low, doesn't take it. And Pex also doesn't take it. So yeah, he had to recover there. Now the game is completely over. Not that it was not over anyway. I think Sakimitu definitely had better matchup. Um, like, Shake didn't even play this bad so far. He just didn't have much for, like, a well-played Medi. Like, sub Medi champ pretty much gave him the rest. That just... I don't know if I should say that, but like so many just broke his neck, if you want to say it like that. <laughs> but yeah, this is pretty much the, the Shake is on the Raiders, right? And Psychic Mewtwo is on the Tyrants. I haven't talked about that yet. He's just gonna click Dark Pulse here, get his Battle Bond, and the game is over, right? <laughs> so now he has to go Scarf Lando. Scarf Lando only has one more switch into Rocks, and he can threaten this Greninja out, but Greninja come back in later and click Water Shuriken. Also, Scarf Katana can win if Scissor dies. Like, he has. Sagimito has so many ways to win this game at this point. But yeah, he, he's not gonna stay in here, because, uh, yeah, Greninja can obviously outspeed Scarf Lando if it comes back in with Water Shuriken. So he's probably gonna go to his own landers here. Even if um, Shake predicts the opposing landers, it doesn't matter at all. Sagimito has more sex, and yeah, th this game is over. Yeah, I would just throw my Landris in here. Because the Coco um, can still get a kill with the Z-Move, which is probably z well charge. It can kill either the Scizor or the Torn. There's no reason to go hard Coco on a potential Earthquake. I would just throw my Landris in. If he really wants to, he can also go Kartana, because Kartana can eat a Scarf Earthquake and then outspeed this Landris. But there's no point in doing that. You can just go Landris. Landris is poisoned. You don't need Landris to win. You're not sure why it's taking so long. It goes Magiana. Oh, that's also that's also fine. It, he has so many ways of winning the game. It doesn't matter. Now he's gonna have to go Tornadoes and hope for Hurricane Confusion. Maybe I don't know what else he can do. 
Because if he goes Scissor, he just gets HP fired. This land was dies to rocks, has no more switch ins. Unless the Scissor has Defog as well, but I don't think the Scissor has Defog. He goes Torn. Yeah, now he has to go for Hurricane and hope for a confusion. But Sakimoto can just go for Volt Switch. And even if he confuses and hits himself in confusion, it doesn't really matter because. He could also sack his landers if he doesn't want to risk him hitting himself in confusion. If he wants to keep this for the scissor, yeah, he could do that as well. But since he has Z-Move on Coco still, he doesn't need that. So he defox. Okay, okay, okay. He defox to. He defox to um, make the landers have another switch in. But landers having another switch in doesn't help him. Um, I think it didn't matter what he did there. I think he lost anyway. But he pretty much had to, I think, go for Hurricane Confusion. But yeah, now Sakimitu can go to Landris or he can stay in. Not that it matters. I guess going Landris is the better play because keeping this with HP Fire to guarantee a win versus Scissor makes sense. But after, it doesn't really matter at all. He can sack this or the Landris. Then he comes in with Greninja and clicks Water Shrieking. And I think that would either kill the Landris or two would KO the Scissor. So would get a kill. And if Shake decides to sack the Landris, then Coco can kill the Scissor with Z-Move. So he doesn't necessarily need the Megiana, right? Yeah, like... This endgame, like, there's like three or four ways to go about this endgame. Like, it didn't matter what he did, he had so many win cons or like ways to win the game. So, this time he goes Landers on U John. So, Shake can uh, attempt to SD up. Um, this should be SD Scissor because he had Defog on Torn, right? And I don't know if the Zapdos had Defog. The Zapdos could have been Roost 3 attacks, I guess. So, the Scissor is. SD U turn, Roost, Bullet Punch. Could also be Knockoff over U turn. So, U turn into what? Coco, Coco on the, there's the SD. I think Coco lives a bullet punch, so Coco is just gonna go for Z move here. Um, Shake should go for bullet punch crit here, I guess. I don't think bullet punch kills without crit. I mean, maybe he has, still has a slight chance if he crits bullet punch on Coco, then he still has to crit bullet punch on Megiana because if I recall correctly, Megiana was still healthy. And also, Greninja is also out of bullet punch range, right? So like. He would have to, like, get so much hacks at this point to win. So there's the Z move. Bop! This is gonna die. Yep. I don't know why he didn't go for Bullet Punch, but I guess he was trying to lift that Z move and go for Roost and then Roost again and then maybe SD again. I guess that's what he was hoping for. So he quirks, pick up the Landers, and now Greninja can click Water Shuriken, or Katana can click Leaf Blade, or Landers can click HP Ice. Lots of ways to win this game. Um, not really sure. If he made any misplays at the end, like Shaq really needed so many, so much hacks to win. Like, like I said, he needed bullet punch, crit, etc. More hacks even. So, Sayyid Mutu picking up the win versus Shaq. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back with more SPL coverage. And also, shout out and thanks to my man Ultra Balls for helping me with other SPL coverage. Goodbye.